Okay, so I'm getting ready to um, remove this distributor cap. So I'm just gonna go in and get myself plenty of room. And these are just J hooks, as you probably know. You're just gonna press them in and then turn them off. about a half a turn. And they release the uh, the cap from the base, the distributor. And of course, it's still plugged here. I'll show you that in a sec. Or you can just roll that out of the way. So next, I'm gonna have to remove the um, the rotor. Need a Phillips screwdriver for that. And let me bring you in so you can see what I'm going to be removing here. This is the module. So I'm going to take that. Maybe I can just uh, bring it out a little bit out of the way so I can clean and, uh, and then apply some of that uh, thermal grease. Okay, so I have my little tripod set up in the most precarious fashion over the carb. Anyway, these are quarter inch, tiny little screws. the module and I had plenty of grease under there. I need a paper towel now. So what I think I'm gonna do is just to allow myself to work here properly I'm gonna unplug it. one that one we can leave plugged and you can see the mess that I had here again this is just just because that those articles I read about the um, the thermal paste made a, a lot of sense to me I'm telling you to do this. This is just stuff that I do to my car. But I'm thinking that, um, you know, it makes sense that for something that electronic that, that, that may get hot, just like a computer does, um, you wanna, you wanna use a good product that's gonna actually do what it's supposed to do. Now, back in the day, I don't know what Chevy used. But I read somewhere they called it some kind of insulating grease or something along those lines. So that is pretty clean now. Now I'm gonna get take my module and also give it a good wipe down so that is clean and dry. Now next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply the uh, the grease directly onto the base plate. Okay, 
So I have my little spreader and this uh, thermal compound. Okay. So let's see. Here goes nothing. I just put a little dab there. And then use this spreader to do what? To spread it. Of course, I'm going to need a little more. First, I'm using this product, so I really don't know. much to apply or anything like that but I think you want to just basically create almost like a a gasket of the uh, of the stuff and just take your time and get it to cover as much as possible I think just totally guessing here. One of these little syringes will do about two of these things. Now, I could also apply it to the um, to the module itself. I don't think it's going to be necessary, so I'm gonna. I'm not going to do that. At least now. And um, but if any of you guys watching this has any experience with this product and it's used in application, please don't be shy. Just let me know. I, um, again, apparently the dielectric grease is not the... Uh, I'm not going to say not... You know, I'm not going to call it the, the wrong product, but let's just say that it's not the ideal product for this application. Now, what GM used back in the day were computers, when computers used to be as big as a, as a freaking house. I don't know. I don't think... Um, use exactly this or something intended for chips and uh, CPUs or whatever you call them things but modern products so well I think I want to call that done for now um, there's no real instructions here. Let me look at the at the box, see if there's anything. Oh, everything is kind of covered with a, with a freaking label. But um, all it says is high performance thermal paste. So, probability. Unmatched performance, but it doesn't say anything that you have to let it dry or anything like that. I, uh, and again, with the comments I saw online, I didn't see anything specific. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, give it a couple of minutes and then pop the module. I don't know if this is supposed to harden or whatever but uh, I'll give it about a minute and then I'll just pop the the module back uh, in place back in a sec okay so it's been about a minute so we're gonna go ahead and just set it back into to place there and try to find out where the you know what I want to do first is actually I have enough room in here to plug it. 
So let me lift this thing a little bit. Get that thing back where it belongs. There we go. Oh, maybe I, I usually do actually. These are a quarter inch, by the way. Um, I usually wear gloves. I um, didn't do that this time because I forgot, I guess. I don't know if this stuff is bad for you. I don't think I, I touched much of that paste anyway. But, um, and there was no more that I could see on that little packet. So, So anyway, just for, you may want to research that if you decide to do anything like this, you know, you don't want to touch the stuff and then you take taking a shower and have your nuts fall off or something like that. But um, anyway, no need to overtime that either. Um, I did read that uh, some of the comments were like, um, cars running like crap before they, they use this product and uh, and all of that. So, I, uh, again, changing so many things lately and uh, since I'm having that overheating issues, I'm just like trying to ensure that everything is as stock as it can be. Alrighty, so I'll post again when I'm, when I, um, I'm ready to start it up and uh, see how everything, how everything goes. And I'll let you know either way if it's awesome or if it's horrible, so. Alrighty, that's it for now. Later. Hey guys, also just a quick reminder for those of you who might need such a reminder. When it comes to the firing order, it's very simple. One eight four three six five seven two. Remember that number. That that applies to most uh, VH Chevys. So again, one which is that cylinder over over there. So again, one eight four three, six, five, seven, two. And that's why I, I like to, um, as you can see here, mark the boots. Sometimes I, I add these um, little reminders. And um, so, so your car fires up properly if you, um, if you decide to do what I just did there, right?